time really does fly. It's hard to believe that it's now almost four years ago in 2017 when Windows Phone OS stopped receiving active development and end of life for the operating system was announced for the beginning of 2020. But in today's video, we'll be taking a nostalgic look back at this mobile OS and see how the performance maybe stacks up here in 2021 and what things are still usable, what's not, and slightly reminisce when consumer usage on these smart devices was still quite low back in the day and primarily it was businesses aimed at productivity that used their services when competition, again, from iOS and Android were still pretty much non-existent. But as those other OSs started to create more optimized user interfaces and have a push on more and more mobile app development, it soon became clear that Microsoft's OS was falling behind. We'll be looking back at the OS using one of the last smartphones that was released running on the platform, and that is the Alcatel Idol 4S that came out at the end of 2016. And they were kind of smart because the company had also released a identical version of the smartphone running on Android, so they were just dabbling in a different software alternative. So this has pretty much the top of the line or highest end specifications that you can find these days for a Windows phone. And that includes what at the time was quite a respectable Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 processor coupled with four gigabytes of RAM, a 21 megapixel rear facing camera, a aluminum and glass design, along with a 5.5 inch AMOLED display covering the front. So these specs of course in 2021 are no longer flagship grade, but they're still decent, so it also has the best chance of having retained the strongest performance if you are still looking at a Windows Phone device today. Like other flagship Windows Phones released towards end of life, it also came with a fairly underrated feature called Continuum where connecting the phone using USB Type-C to any monitor or TV could transform the display into a pseudo desktop experience. You can use the phone as a touchpad, and the experience is really reminiscent of what you get these days from Samsung's DeX, which are all built upon this long-running dream of having your smartphone become also your computer. And it still, I think, is a rather underrated function that just wasn't very heavily advertised. And even to this day, it still reminds me a lot of a modern Windows 10 desktop experience of of course, you can't technically run full executables or Windows programs. It's still restricted to the mobile apps that you have from your device, but it just gives you a bigger canvas that's easier to interact with. Now, the UI of Windows Phone is also quite nostalgic and familiar because of the way that these tiles are arranged. Everything is oversized, easy to click on, and gone are the days of the tiny icons and text of Windows Mobile. However, I would say in terms of personalization, it's also still not quite as high as on Android in terms of the flexibility that you get. However, it was definitely very easy to use. Runs pretty fast and there's no real hiccups in terms of swiping and interactions, which is partially expected because Windows Phone was always very well optimized. Even on lower end hardware, earlier devices that had just a single core, one gigahertz processor, and half a gig of RAM, believe it or not, was still able to run significantly faster and smoother from a UI perspective than on Android counterparts. So it's no real surprise that the same can be said about one of its phones that have the highest end configurations. So in place of the Google services, you'll find Microsoft's equivalents, such as Outlook for email instead of Gmail, Cortana for the smart voice assistant instead of, let's say, Google Assistant or Alexa, and there's the Microsoft Store for downloading additional games and applications as opposed to the Play Store or the iOS Store. Uh, to my surprise though, in terms of even though this operating system has been discontinued for well over a year officially, now, the App Store hasn't been shut down just yet. So if you go in there, you can still find things that you can download. You won't find any new titles or things that really haven't been there in the past, but you can still see a selection that you can play around with. A slightly annoying thing though is not all of the titles that you find from the store are completely supported for your phone anymore. As we start to see a few apps, for example, Gardenscapes, that shares the application which is available for desktops. So if you try to click on install, it's not going to actually work in terms of installing on your phone. And that is a bit of a shame. It becomes a little bit cluttered since you'll have to poke around and see which apps on here are actually meant to be installed on a phone versus ones that aren't uh, designed from the get-go. Selection is definitely more narrow than on Android, even back in the phone's heyday. In fact, if you're trying to look for official Google applications like YouTube, it simply doesn't exist anymore in the store. So that you have to try an alternative like iTube Pro or UTV, which are from third-party developers that allow you to playback videos, or you can just go into the web browser itself and visit
visit the mobile version of youtube.com. Now speaking of the browser, by default we do have Edge, but just like the phone itself, it's been slightly out of date. At the time of this video though, it still is workable in terms of it can still open up most links without any certificate issues or things like that. So if we type something up, we can do a quick search and we can see that the overall responsiveness is still serviceable. It's not going to be lightning fast takes a moment or two for things to snap into focus, just like on an entry level or a mid-tier phone, uh, but overall things do still load and render correctly, just give it a bit more patience, and at least scrolling is pretty smooth without too much jumpiness or anything like that. Things I still like about the Edge browser, by the way, on their mobile devices is they've been one of the first versions of a browser to put the uh, address bar on the bottom region, which is a lot easier to hit with your fingers instead of reaching all the way to the top. And other characteristics which remain nice on Windows Phone includes the built-in keyboard, which is really spacious and easy just to swipe on. Other alternatives for browsers that you can try out, uh, there are a few that I found, but again, the selection is quite limited. And these are based on technology stacks, uh, which are written similar to Chromium in the back end. So it will give you a slightly different experience, maybe supporting a few more newer extensions and plugins, things like that, and you can try these out if you don't like to use the built-in Edge browser or as the Edge browser becomes more outdated in the future. So this is going to be kind of one of those alternatives, and it will use uh, Google as the default search engine. In terms of navigating the UI, we can also long hold on the Windows key for a few seconds to enter a one-handed mode, which is actually a kind of interesting gesture that I found to be kind of refreshing when looking back at it, since our phones these days are still just getting larger and larger, and this is a nice kind of quick way to access it on all Windows phones. There's also the ability to long hold on the back key for a few seconds, and that will bring up the multitasking, which comes up as these cards that you can switch back and forth between. Again, this particular device with four gigs of RAM is still sufficient for doing some multitasking. Jumping back and forth between the browser tabs, it still is left open there in the memory, as you can see. Now, it seems like the voice assistant Cortana has also reached its end of life, and this is a completely software decision instead of anything related to hardware, but Microsoft seems to have turned off the function on all their phones, which is a little bit disappointing. I mean, Cortana was never quite as good as Google Assistant, but uh, still, this was something that was good to have as a backup. So now if you tap on Cortana, what's the weather in Seattle? Sorry, Cortana is no longer supported on Windows Phone, but I can still help you on your PC. So pretty much that's the only thing that I can tell you now, regardless of what question you're asking. Other utility tools, though, are luckily still running, including the weather app. So this is very similar to what you'll find on a Windows computer these days. It will still populate with all the most relevant and top news uh, from different sources that's going on around you locally, internationally, across different genres and categories. It does take a few seconds to populate and update things, but at least everything is readable. Camera, I'm not going to touch on too much because I do think that is one that really varies on a case-by-case -case basis depending on the hardware of your phone. In the particular instance of the Alcatel Idol 4S, again 21 megapixels, a pretty high count, but the Overall results are only so-so, especially by 2021 standards, although there were definitely some very good camera phones back in the day running on this OS, including the rather iconic Nokia Lumia 1020. In a day and age where we're seeing more and a more emphasis on computational photography, it's also where having lower-end hardware is starting to show a bit more, um, as we see devices like even the newer iPhones and Pixels start to produce just amazing results using a lot of the processing power. Check out your achievements on different games just from your phone as well as maybe leverage a bit of cloud gaming very early cloud gaming support that is so those are some of the things that are still on here but uh, don't expect it to be as fast as they were back in the day when there were still updates and optimization rolling in and it's also not something that you'll necessarily know when the support might turn off in the future Oftentimes, you'll find titles here which are pretty obscure by 2021 standards. You certainly won't find many of the kind of most popular games these days in the store. So that is one thing, of course, to keep in mind. One of the areas, though, that remains working quite well is the emphasis on productivity. So things like 
PowerPoint, Excel, and Word were all staples on all Windows phones and even Windows mobile devices back in the day, since again, these are Microsoft products. So you'll have the ability to kind of access all of your documents, even create new ones, or even edit them directly on their phones. And this is really no exception. So in terms of those Office document editing functions, that is still an area where Windows Phone continues to shine if you are trying to do something really quickly on your phone. Now in terms of the track down notification tray, here is a look back at what that design was like. So very similar to Windows 10 OS on our laptops and computers, desktops, uh, we have the ability to turn on or off all of these different functions. Under advanced settings, you could also customize things like the color of the tiles on the home screen. You can change between different themes there. Although again, you can't really change, let's say the wallpaper in the background. So the amount of things that you can toggle are still kind of limited, but at least it's kind of playful and a very kind of minimalistic UI. So that's more or less it as far as our revisited look back at a Windows phone here in 2021, really late 2021, almost heading into 2022. And it is kind of a bittersweet revisit because to be honest, there's still a lot of things that are functional and uh, I kind of miss looking back at this OS. It's uh, having a pretty beautiful UI, I have to admit. Windows Continuum remains a function that I think is pretty underrated. And certain things like generally browsing the web and some of the basic utility tools are still working just fine. But at the same time, it still reveals quite a few things that are no longer functional, such as support for Cortana. Not that it was ever really heavily used, but still kind of a shame to see those functions stripped away just because of the end of life support from Microsoft's end. And also with no longer any updates getting supported, you'll have to really find your way around um, if any of these apps go down at any reason. So in terms of whether you should pick up a Windows phone, power device in 2021? The answer is probably no, even if it's one of the last devices like this Alcatel Idol 4S, which in terms of performance and hardware still is perfectly serviceable. But unless you're using it for a very light web browsing or as a collectible, it just doesn't make as much sense as if you're spending a similar amount of money, um, such as under $100 on an Android equivalent, you can probably find one that is still supported with official security updates and with the equivalent Google apps, which are going to be just more mainstream for the vast majority of folks, unless you need something just for basic productivity and for making calls and light web browsing. So anyways, kind of a sad story because I think Microsoft could have done significantly better in terms of uh, their presence in the mobile space. And with the release of the Microsoft Surface Duo, we of course see Microsoft still isn't completely done in terms of making hardware products. It's just they've converted over to Android now. Uh, until at least in the foreseeable future, if they try to retry their hand again at making a mobile version of an operating system. But there's definitely a lot of work to do there. And uh, it just tells a story of really how competitive and fickle this space is to survive. So you can check out more details about Windows Phone in the description below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.